In this lab, we will use the external interrupts and we will learn how to configure the interrupt controller of the STM32C0. So let's get started. In this project, we are going to configure the GPIO that is connected to the user button as an external interrupt, so called EXTI, with raising edge trigger. And we will also configure the interrupt controller that is called the NVIC. The extended interrupt and event controller can generate interrupt and events as well as wake up the processor from stop mode. Configurable events are linked with external interrupts from GPIOs, PVD, and other peripherals. Direct events are linked with RTC, Temper, and other peripherals like I2C, UART, uh, and also DLSE. So, PXY, where X equal A, B, C, D, and uh, so on, so which is the port, and this is here the pin number. So basically, what I'm trying to say here is PA0, for example, or PB0, or PC0, they are linked to the same interrupt event, which is EXTI0, in this case. But the same case, for example, if you take, uh, I don't know, PA15, or, you know, like uh, PB15 or PC15, they are linked to the same interrupt event, EXTI15. And then we have groups. So, uh, for example, multiple EXTI inputs will be linked to the same group. So, in the C0, for example, the EXTI0 and 1 are grouped together. And then EXTI2 and 3 are linked together, and so on. So, we have some groups, you know, associated with that. Very quickly, this is the block diagram of the extended interrupt and event controller. The XTI controller provides interrupt detection, masking, and software triggers. Direct events are generated by peripherals supporting interrupt requests. In this case, the EXTI controller is used to generate events to the CPU and to request system wakeups. Let's review the NVIC, which is the interrupt controller. So the NVIC, which stands for Nested Vector Interrupt Controller, is integrated in the Cortex M0 Plus CPU that is embedded in the STM32C0. The main features are 32 interrupt sources, four programmable priority levels, low latency exceptions and interrupt handling, automatic nesting, Power management control. It's time for the lab. So in STM32 Cube ID, we're going to create a new project that we can call, for example, STM32 C0 EXTI. Then we will add the configuration to two GPIOs. So one GPIO, which is the IO PC13 that is connected to the user button, that we will configure as an external interrupt. So GPIO EXTI13 in this case. And we'll also use PA5, so the I.O. that is connected to the LED, to blink the LED every time we press the button. Okay, so I'm going to create a new project in uh, STM32 Cube ID. So, new STM32 project. Enter the part number, like we did before. Remember, C031, C6, T6. So, this is this one, right? Okay, and then press next. Now we give a name to the project. STM32 C0 EXTI. And press finish. Now we configure our two IOs. We start with PC13, which is located here. And you want to left click on the mouse and select GPIO EXTI13. So this is the configuration for external interrupt. And we'll also configure PA5, which is located here, as a GPIO output to blink the LED. OK, so this IO is connected to uh, the user button. And we're going to use this. So every time we release the button, so we want to blink the LED. So we're going to detect like a rising edge. That's what we want to configure now. 
to look at the GPIO mode of PC13, we're going to enter the system view. So you're going to click on system view, then GPIO, click on PC13, and look at the GPIO mode. Make sure we have selected external interrupt mode with rising edge trigger detection. So go to system view right here, click on GPIO, click PC13, and then we're going to look at the GPIO mode. Make sure that this is external interrupt mode with rising edge. Okay, so you have other modes, rising, falling, and both rising and falling. In this case, we just want you know to detect a rising edge. Now we can configure the NVIC. So you're going to click on NVIC and go to the line which is EXTI line 4 to 15 interrupts and enable it. So because EXTI 13 is part of this interrupt vector. Okay, now click on NVIC look for the line that is EXTI line 4 to 15 and enable it. We can then generate the code. So just save the project that will generate the code. And we're going to add some code to the template project that was generated. First, we'll add a variable that we'll call PC13 underscore flag that we will initialize to zero. We will also add a callback function so we'll add the callback function for EXTI rising interrupt. So in this function, we will increase by one, you know, the flag, so the PC13 flag, and depending on the value of the flag, we will turn on or off the LED. Now we're going to add the callback function. So scroll down and go to the user code four. So this is at the end of the file right there. And add this function. So this is a callback function. This code can be found in the comment section of this video. So you can copy and paste it from there. Otherwise, you can pause and just add, you know, these few lines of code. This callback function is called by uh, ISR, so a handler. So this is in this stm 2 c 0 xx underscore it.c. Scroll down. Go to the ISR, the handler of uh, the XTI line 4 to 15, and this is you know the function call. In this function call, we'll have a callback at the end. Now build the project. Make sure your board is connected, your nuclear board, and now you can enter the debug mode. So click on this icon, the little bug icon switch perspective. So you enter the debug mode. Now you can execute your code. And basically, every time you press on the user button, so that's the blue button on your nuclear board, the LED is going to toggle. So the code works as expected. And we are done with this lab. So we can stop the execution there and you can close your projects.